So the lag to initiate everything here, Mark, and imagine getting off the plane and walking into this match. Wow. That's well, one feature matchup after the other on the TV table here. Van Boning Strickland doesn't get any better than this. As Scott Smith said, the old guard and the new guard. Shane representing the new guard. This is the 39th annual U.S. Open, but there's eight of those titles right here on this table. And it'll only ever be Earl Strickland and a handful of players to accumulate eight U.S. Open titles. Right. The, the, the Pearl's got to be one of them. Van Boning might be the only guy that has a chance to come up with five. Yeah, you might be right. World-class field here, Jim. The standards get higher every single year. You should see some of the matches we've been uh, able to witness here. Van Boning's won the leg, set to break. And now putting the nine on the spot, Mark, has there been uh, much of a difference? Yeah, it's made many games tactical, although uh, remarkably many players have struggled with the break, but we just had a match here where DeShane was 1,000% on the break. He won the match. But there you saw Shane's cue ball hopping quite a bit, so we know he mishit the head ball just a little bit. Well, for me, the road to the title goes right through this guy's backyard. Looking for a third, unprecedented third U.S. Open title in a row. And you know, you always have a match, don't you? When you look back at any big tournament you've won, you always have that one match that you can look back on and say, boy, that one could have gone either way. And Van Boning had his in the last one, didn't he, against Rob Saez? Yeah, Saez was ahead 10-8, and uh, he actually made the winning nine ball and scratched on it. And then he played himself out of position and had to make a jump shot in the next rack. And then Van Boning broke and ran out to close it out with a, a perfect textbook run out. It was really neat. Strickland played phenomenal earlier today, too. He had a very tough man here. In fact, Earl's only dropped six racks to this point, playing his third match. Van Boning's only played his second. He got a walkover. A bye in the first round, and then that one against Rob Saez that easily could have knocked him to the loser's bracket. But that's when you measure the man. And he certainly answered the bell. And this one looks like it just goes by the seven into the corner. Just. Yeah. Well, the elevation also makes this play tough. Certainly approve of the effort there as he tried to play a rail first off the seven ball. Just barely missed. Well, this is the key shot right here. If Earl can get back from the one to the three near the bottom right corner, first rack will be at his mercy. Nice thin hit. Looks like he's going to land heavy on the six. Yep. Well, that was never going to be easy. There was a lot of traffic there that Earl had to negotiate. It's going to be hard to play a kick safety here, too, because it's in such an awkward uh, position. He may have to just go in. Well, he can go rail first. Oh, he might be able to spin this in then, Jim. Oh, effortlessly. Great shot. That's the thing with Earl Strickland is he makes... The very awkward shots look like they're straightforward. Case in point right there. Well, he's looking in the crowd. You know, there's a 40-second shot clock, but both these guys play so fast that will not be a factor in this match. So important to get off to a good start. And Strickland knows it. He's got tons of respect for his partner in the recently concluded World Cup of Pool, the team event that was played in the south coast of England. He and Shane represented America there. Nice three cushion position. Person that wins the first rack goes on to win over 55% of the matches. So that's a that's a valuable bit of knowledge there. I was always a slow starter and started to think, well, I got to play for 45% the rest of my life. This would be awful. So I started playing every rack like it was the last rack. Well, if Strickland's nervous, he's not showing it. 
riffled through that first rack. As soon as he sliced that three in, made short work of the rest. One nothing, the pearl. Have you ever seen a more talented offensive player than Earl Strickland? Never. Mm -hmm. And and Mark, you've been around pool an awful lot more than I have. But uh, I mean, pure shot making ability. You know, no, they're they're. If there was anyone around, it was before I started getting into the pool scene. Yeah, me too. Um, super firepower and tremendous with any kind of elevated cue shot. He, he's the favorite on those things. When everybody else struggles, Earl just relishes them. He practices them for hours. But, you know, to his credit, he trains like an athlete. And, and he really works at his craft. It's not just something he shows up for. He's pretty handy on the tennis court, golf course, anything involving hand-eye coordination. He's a very talented man, Earl Strickland. And he's not in the Hall of Fame for nothing. Yeah, that's right. We've had, earlier today, we had the incoming uh, Hall of Fame electee, Jose Perica, playing the current Hall of Fame member, Efren Reyes. And that was a tremendous match to watch. <laughs> if you were an Efren fan. Well, no, I mean, it was much better played than the score indicated. It was, it was a very entertaining match. Second rack, again, opting with the cut break and didn't see anything drop. More importantly, he may well have left Van Boning a chance. If this one will just slither past the seven into that corner pocket, everything's in the open. Very close, though, Mark. Not sure if it goes. And when do you have balls this close together, the cue ball and the object ball, sometimes you get a little skid or a little extra throw. You have to plan to overcut these a little bit. Maybe it's an optical illusion. I don't know. No, he's going to duck here. He's going to try and get the cue ball in behind the seven. A little half mass A. Just rubbed the one. Oh, he missed it. I thought he might have wiggled it, but uh, maybe it's my eyes blinking here. No, nope, he did not hit it. That was about how thin he had to hit it, though, wasn't it? Well, these are the kind of chances Earl has to make full use of, and he knows it. You're going to beat a player the caliber of a Shane Van Boning. Mistakes are going to be at a premium from Van Boning. You have to assume that. And this is a great opportunity for Earl to put Shane under a bit of pressure. Neither one of these players known for beating themselves by making unforced errors. You know, really, a lot of times when Earl's playing well, he can commentate his own match. They really don't need it. So they will mic him up. He will tell you everything, how he's feeling, what he's doing. I remember one time I, yeah, I was in the studio, and it was the World Championships in Cardiff. And I think you were there a few times too, Mark. I was sitting talking to Barry Hearn, the, the owner and the fellow who has put Matchroom Sport on the map. And we were talking about Earl and we both felt that Earl was the type of player that created an electric atmosphere because he knew he was one of the few players that could compete under that sort of condition. And there's an unforced error that, well, Earl's got to try and guard against that. Wide open four. And Shane's yeah. going to make him pay. Well, Van Boning feels great after giving up ball in hand to come back to the table on an open layout like that and have uh, Strickland miss a Wide open shot. What's happened here, Jim? I, don't, I just had to, I mean, you saw Shane's face as soon as he hit it. He can still get through to the six. He's lucky. That had to be a miss hit. I don't know what he did. He kind of let up. It looked like he lifted his head prematurely. He may have to kind of half twirl this, or he may have to jump it. If he has to uh, lightly hit it, then you know it makes the play a little bit tougher. These guys have super firepower, so. But it shakes your confidence when you get a little out of position deliberately. You know, it's hard enough to play the game anyway. It's not that he couldn't make this. If Strickland left this for him, he'd feel great about it. But when you leave it for yourself, it starts to make you wonder a little bit what's going on here. The play's tougher. Championship conditions here. These diamond tables just play so good. One piece slates, Simona's cloth. And the players have played up to that standard too.
Got a little thin, didn't he? A little rail first, maybe, and then got his cue ball a little hot. Very smooth, and he didn't try to overdo anything there. Just gonna have to be a shot maker up through this rack. He was unable to really get the right position on any of these balls. Well, he punished the Strickland for that miss on the four. And the first two racks have been split with these two champions. Van Boning will have the break in rack number three. The race to 11, it'll be heating up, no doubt about that. Van Boning led off with what appeared to be a slight miss hit on the break because the cue ball was kind of bounding around and going down below the, the spot. Last year, he broke. It was ridiculous how well he broke. And you just got the feeling everyone that played him were just praying for a chance. And... It rarely came. I really admire his work ethic, too. Well, and you talk about Strickland being a fitness fanatic. Uh, Shane's a pretty healthy guy, too. Well, that ball went in, but it's going to be nothing more than a push here unless he's too close to that six, I think, Mark, to be able to try and jump it. He's, he's just looking now at an area where he wants to push to and bring Strickland out of his chair. Or, or not. He's pushing into a jump. Well, I think Strickland's going to take this shot. I think he's going to get out of his jump cue and pop it in. And the hope that he hits it full enough that the cue ball doesn't take him out of position on the two, just accept a long position. Have you seen Earl's cue? It's got to be about 64 inches long, that cue. It is. He's been playing with it for a few years, and he has a tennis wrap around it that makes it just about the size of a Pringles can <laughs> going around it. How he does it, he's got arm weights, ankle weights. Uh, he's an amazing guy to play with all that stuff. He's kind of pioneered the long cue, though. You see a lot of players using extensions today. Now, because I'm tall, I play with a long cue all my life, so I don't know exactly what benefit they feel like they derive from it, but it seems like they seem to indicate that it makes the cue go straighter. Mark, you're going to have everyone searching for a long cue. Uh, well, that's the idea. Spike up the long cue market. He did try to jump it in. Well, Shane gets to come back to the table. Another golden opportunity. Match is tied right now. Well, that was a bit of a tactical ploy from Van Boney, and he won that little mini chess match. Kind of challenged Strickland with the jump shot, betting he wouldn't get it. Very interesting dynamic because Shane's forced to play that shot if Strickland gives it back, so it frees you up to play the shot. <laughs> and when you make the decision to play it, then there's always that little hint of doubt. Should I be doing this for sure or not? It makes it just a little harder. That was actually a better shot than it looked. Very nice control of the cue ball, given that he had to use the rake. And with a player of Van Boning's height, not very often you see him bring the rake out. And I wouldn't expect he enjoys that. Shane Van Boning, arguably... One of the top players in the United States, if not the top player in the United States. I think you could easily say Earl Strickland belongs in that upper crust and Johnny Archer today. And then after watching this previous match, I think you'd have to say Mike DeShane also has emerged into that group. Yeah, that was a very good player that Mike took out in the previous match to this one, Albin Ocean. Runner-up in this year's World Nine Ball Championships to Niels Fine. He 
you know, a lot of people wouldn't recognize it. You would. This is somebody that lives for pool. It's not just something they do as a hobby or they just try to be a professional or something. Every molecule of his body is about playing great pool. That's how you get to this skill set where you can make the balls go in as freely as they are. Well, he's a star back home. They all know who he is and they all know where he made his name. And that name is going to continue to get bigger and bigger as the years go on. Because for me, I still think his best is yet to come. When you're that young, you'd have to because you mature at a much later age in pool. And he, he maintains the fire because he loves the sport. It's not about money. He loves the sport. He'll practice like a beast. And one time we were doing an interview, and it was a time right after he won the BCA Open in Las Vegas. And I said, how's a young guy like you celebrate this, thinking he'd fill the trophy with champagne and stay drunk for a week? He said, you know, I like to go to the pool room and just hit balls by himself in solitude in his jeans with no pretense of, uh, that's where he's comfortable, that's his office. Mark, I'll tell you another story as Shane breaks off. And again, doesn't look like there's any friends at the table for him, but has he gotten away with the one? You'll have a quick look to see if it goes by the eight. Tough to tell from that camera angle. The, the first year that Shane won the U.S. Open back in 2007, Every time there was an open table, it was played across the parking lot at the conference center back then. Every time there was an open table, he was on it. Mm -hmm. Every single time. It was just like you knew. You know, he was there playing because he just loved it. He loved to compete. He loved to play. Yeah. He, he, he plays to win. You know, he really trains like an athlete and... He gives it his all. I, I totally respect him. He's, a, he's definitely a leader of the sport. By example, not by words. Yeah, there aren't many people that uh, write down Shane Van Boning's address when they're looking for a match. <laughs> Well, that's a mistake from Van Boning. Tried to avoid the double kiss. That cue ball was coming down behind the, the other balls. That would have almost surely have snookered Strickland. But as it is now, a chance for Earl to grease that back arm again. So smooth, Earl Strickland. is so confident the way he hits the ball. He never hits one like he doubts it. He hits it like he means it. Well, he just slightly overhit that. He's going to have to run up table with the cue ball. Quick check on the five to see if it goes by the nine to the bottom left corner as we look. And looks like it does. That's a sign of a confident man, Mark, when he's looking a few shots ahead. And you know Earl, he, he plays from out of line a lot. You see him, he scrambles around. He, but when he finds his real good rhythm, it starts getting dialed in where he's laying that cue ball right on in there. He's just devastatingly effective. You know, earlier today, he's, he struggles, he's trailing, and all of a sudden he, he gets a little break, and boom, runs four racks. Right in it. No longer having to make speeches, no longer frustrated, feeling that momentum. On Shane's biography paper, from the World Cup of Pool, he said that Strickland was his favorite player. Like many of us, Strickland, one of the most entertaining players to watch. It was a good shot from Earl. Very good Spinning shot. in the cue ball. He's left himself nicely on the five. He just has to roll this in, and he'll drop on the six. But Earl will intimidate a lot of lesser players, as will Van Boning, the speed with which they knock balls in. And that comfort level, too. They almost look like they're on a practice table. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they give the illusion that they, they own this table, and they're just letting you shoot a few shots once in a while. Just, just renting time on it. <laughs> nice. Got to work the cue ball pretty close. Got a little flat, though, didn't he? Hey, this will be interesting. Yeah, he may have to try and, if he can cheat this pocket a little bit, otherwise he may have to bank this nine. 
Yeah, it just he's depends a what he likes. But he knows that's a mistake. This should have been straightforward. So you try and cheat this, Mark? Spin the cue ball out? Well, I think Earl May. He's got tremendous cue power. Yep. Look at the spin. Yep. Gonna have to bank. Mercifully, he's got a pretty nice bank. There's no safety here that's worth buying. He has to go for the... Well, it's not really laying good for the bank from this view. It looks like he'd have to go two cushions, yeah. Well, the mistake was from the 7 to the 8. Now he's paying the price. Would you put the 9 down in the center of the end rail and just put yeah. the cue ball back here? Do you uh, like it? I don't know. I, I don't think he's, he can attack from here. I think he's got to play safe. Well, I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> what Great a shot. shot. Great shot. What a shot from Earl Strickland uh, there. Hey, you know, I even like the speed that he played that. If he plays it a bit wide, it's going to drop in the middle of the rail, which I think was in the back of his mind too. But what a shot from Earl Strickland there. And what a let off that would have been if he'd have brought Van Boning back to the table. As it is, he has secured momentum. And Van Boning knows it. Yeah, he made a little something happen there. That, that was a great recovery in, in baseball. We say that looks like a line drive in the box score tomorrow. You know, they don't know it was a bloop. And I have little doubt that was a full throttle shot at the 9, too. There was nothing lucky about that. The speed that he played it was what I liked. Big break here for Strickland. He'd like to try and put a few packs together here against Van Boning. Try and staple that young man to his chair. Got an ugly kiss. Yeah. Well, this is just what Shane needed right here. Well, a tale of two cities. As great a shot as we saw in the preceding rack, and that was just a, a slice of misfortune there. Let's have another look at that bank shot, Mark. This is the best of Earl Strickland right here. Fantastic. And again, if it, if it catches the right-hand cushion, it's going to drop somewhere in the middle of that top cushion, so it would have been safe even if it didn't go in. Just good speed, just a great shot. Counts for nothing now, I bet you, in his mind. Yeah, tremendous knowledge. We we're going to see the 40 second shot clock. I think Shane's going to use his extension right away. All in determining where he wants to place ball in hand. And the three and four, we had a quick look at it at the top of the table, just underneath the shot clock as you look. If the three doesn't pass the four to the top right corner, and it looks like it may not, that's the cause for concern for Shane right now. Yeah, that would be the only reason he would have to go to ex his extension on this. And now he's clipped a seven, which whatever he had in mind, probably not viable anymore. Maybe it does go then, Jim. Apparently so, right? Well, no, he's re-examining, so it's certainly not easy. Well, it did go. A little more room than it looked. Good shot there. And yeah. in fairness, he's done all the hard work now. Got to keep your focus. Yeah, that's something, Mark. Uh, I always remember Steve Davis, a very good friend of both of us. Uh, Steve used to give added attention to the easier shots because he felt that those are the ones that were more punishing psychologically if you ever missed an easy ball. So he used mm -hmm. to take a little extra time on the easy ones. 
if there is such a thing, I think less difficult is the better term. It's easy to have a couple tough shots and then have them go your way and then have a little letdown, and that's right when it jumps up and bites you because you get a little lazy, take a little break, and all of a sudden, there it is, still hanging. Steve Davis, one of my heroes. Class act all the way. Lots of fun to be around, too. Yeah. I had the misfortune of having to uh, play him a few times. Never, ever <laughs> beat him. Never beat him. Well, Van Boning couldn't have surged ahead by a game here. And that he does. 3-2. Shane just gets his nose in front again. But it was a little bit of unluck from Strickland, though, on the break where the cue ball was kicked in. That laid the foundation for Van Boning in that rack. And neither one of them have looked too good at the table breaking yet. We'll see if they can get that straight. One of my main criticisms of the rules is that it makes the players look less skilled because if people at home think, well, look, at they didn't make anything, five innings. Mm -hmm. I can win games in five innings. They don't know that the pockets are super tight. You know, and I think nine ball's a fast-paced game. It should be played that way and rules that the fans identify with to proliferate the sport. So. But that being said, we're playing these rules. It's the same for both players. We get a lot of tactical games rather than the fast-paced break-and-run-out game. He caught that one with a little bit more force. And that's the cut break. The cue ball traditionally goes cross side. We've had quite a number of scratches there. And if you look, you'll notice that the nine ball kind of filtered down to the corner pocket. It does not win in this tournament if it goes in those two lower corner pockets. It does win if it goes down the other four pockets. Just respotted. Right, and you continue on. And he's going to kick at this, so he's going to try and... Put Earl in jail here, kick at this, and try and duck behind the three and the eight. This soft, is risky. Soft speed. Nice shot. Very Terrific nice shot. shot. And rewarded with a little applause from a fairly knowledgeable audience here. Who wouldn't want to watch this match? You know, <laughs> Strickland Van Bowen. That's what I was saying. I, I just flew in. I got in about... Well, local time here, it's 9.30. I got here about quarter after six. You know, time to grab a bite to eat and walk right in. And here's my first match of the 39th U.S. Open. How's your luck? Yeah. Well, Strickland played it purposefully. Two cushions first. Didn't come out ideal. Left Shane a good shot. Good solid stroke. Yep. Made it look easy. Now the transfer from the two to the three, I don't know. This looks a little treacherous to me. Can you draw it across the table? Come over and play it? No, he's looking to go past the eight. I thought maybe he'd have to go over in the other corner pocket with a three. Well, we still don't know if it goes, though, Mark. He may have to still play this the way he suggested, try and draw it to the left-hand cushion and spin it back over to the right. Just depends. The way he plays this will tell us that that three goes. And it doesn't. And what a great shot from Van Boning. He made that look so easy. A little bit the wrong angle, though. But we can't fault him. He had a great stroke. Yeah, he did. Out. He, he cued that one real nice. But it doesn't get any easier. Mm -mm. No, it's going to be hard to defend himself here down table. He may, he just may, roll the cue ball ahead and play the billiard with the cue ball off the five on the nine. Nope, he's going to try to pound it and bounce it over the eight. Nope. Ooh. 
Boy, he went to a lot of work to get this. He could have rolled it. <laughs> well, this actually plays much harder for the nine from here, it looks like. Something just slightly less than a half ball hit. Oh, he went heavy. He was playing defense. Great ball speed there. If he goes after the nine, he doesn't get defense. If in this fashion, he played for defense. Yeah, you'll see a few players in attendance. Just spotted Donnie Mills up there in the left corner. There'll be a few players taking notes on this one. Yeah, he's going at the nine, too. He may get lucky if the cue ball can find cover behind the six. Might even be an awkward 5-8 combo. No. Maybe it goes. Shane's looking at it, so apparently it does. Can't fall Strickland, though. That was probably the best of all the bad options there. They're all low percentage. He had a chance to win the game with his shot. Might overcut that a little bit, Jim. Yeah, and that's the reason he's in no man's land on the six. They play to such a high level of precision, these top players, that, you know, just that ball going in the right-hand side of the pocket or the left-hand side of the pocket when it's unintended takes them out of position. I call it missing in the pocket. They have to hit a particular side of the pocket. Ben Bunning was forced to bank cross side at this tasteful angle, and he just barely missed it. Strickland wasting no time. Two foot long bridge. Fired it in confidently. <laughs> oh, could you not love watching this guy? Fluid and smooth. But I don't know about you, Mark, but I think 3-3 three, three is a pretty just score, given everything that's happened in the first six racks. Oh, yeah. Exactly where it should be. Nothing between them. Strickland looking for a sixth U.S. Open crown. Van Boning is fourth, but three in a row. Has anyone else impressed you that you've seen on the main table here this week? Every single person. There's a couple guys I've never heard their names before, but uh, let's see. Has, oh. it, has anyone impressed you from the American side? Yeah, Mike DeShane just did. A very impressive performance. We had uh, Brandon Chef out here. He played a remarkable set. He lost 11 to 10, but he didn't really lose. He just ran out of time. I mean, the other guy played just as good. It was really interesting to watch. Who else have we had out here? It's been one after the other. A few upsets in the first round, too. We, uh, I don't know if they're upsets because they're all good players. But, uh, well, I, guess, I think it's fair to say underdogs winning then. I'm not even sure. Bustamani played a tremendous match out here where Bustamani is one of the few guys that can play from out of line and just overpower a tight table with his shot making. He, he doesn't have to get back in line. He just makes six hard shots in a row. Three piece, Strickland winding it up here against Van Boning. Look out, corner pocket. Jonathan Pinniger played a tremendous match here. He broke and ran, I think it was four straight racks, three for sure. Yeah, he's a good player, Pinniger. I remember watching him. It was either last year or the year before on the TV table. And I'll tell you what, Strickland has to feel like he's cursed because that was as good a break as he's hit. And he looked like he was perfect to land on either the one or the two here. And then the three just slides in between the cue ball and the two. Not to go back, but I just want you to know this. Skyler Woodward beat Alex Pagulain on this table, and it was a remarkable match. Alex did not play bad, and Skyler won dominating, you know, dominating way. Yeah, so that I, was really good. I actually, uh, Alex has been playing a bit of uh, bit of pool in, in my room. We're not open yet, but... Uh, 
the exact same kind of tables, Mark, and he came in and spent a couple days there just hitting balls by himself. Because he had, he had been, for those of uh, our viewers that may not be aware, Alex has been over trying to play professional snooker and making the transition from a snooker table to a pool table not so easy. Well, it's amazing he can even do both as well as he does, you know, huh? Who does that? I don't think there's anybody else that's going to make that same. Oh, that's uh, a good hit from Shane. Now the rest is kind of in the lap of the gods, but that was an excellent escape from Van Boning there. And Strickland yeah. really with little option other than to try and find cover here again, Mark. But yeah, Alex, just uh, touching on Alex again, he did have a couple days of, uh, of good play and, uh, you know, by himself, no one bothering him. Good speed, distance, and end rail to end rail. I've seen the loser's bracket. He plays Ralph Souquet. That's kind of his nemesis. As long as Alex has been a great player, Souquet has been a great player for the same length of time. And I uh, don't know if Alex has ever beaten Ralph in anything that counted. Really? That's interesting. Didn't know he had any Achilles heel. Just a German one. Yeah. One time uh, Reyes was playing Suke, and I said to him, I said, Ralph, what do you think your lifelong record against Ralph, uh, Efren is? And he said, you know, uh, unbelievable. He says, uh, he said it like this. He goes, I'm either 21 and 6 or 21 and 7. I said, so you mean to tell me he's only beat you seven times, you beat him 21? He goes, yes, I did. I said, boy, that's amazing, because I don't think anyone else even has, if they have a winning record, it'd only be barely. And he says, but you know what, Mark? He says, for as good as my record is against Reyes, my record is worse than that against Bustamani. Cannot beat Bustamani. It was the most interesting thing, you know. What a, it, and then Reyes has a great record against Bustamani, so it's like the perfect circle there. Yeah, well, every player has, a, has their little bogeyman. Earl's going to have to duck again. He's not going to want to leave Van Boning anything to jump at, so the last thing he wants to do is stick that three over the pocket again, even if he does find cover. That's going to be a good shot, isn't it? Uh, no. I don't know. It's Hard close. To tell. Hard to, yeah. It's real close. Like Shane might have to thin the three to the end rail off the side cushion and let the cue ball go back down. To, well, he's queuing up as if he can make it. I nope. don't know, Mark. He might be doing exactly what you said. No, he is trying to make it and did. Now he's going to play a beard on the nine with a cross side bank or what? Or just a straightaway safety. I guess he's going to take a minute and sort it out. I think he's going to play safe. I don't think he's going to be that aggressive. Nope. I'll be wrong again. Going for both balls. Nope. Safety. Not his best effort. It's amazing how just missing that hit by a millimeter or so lets that cue ball trickle out two ball widths, which is too much. Boy. Stupendous shot from Strickland there. <laughs> and even as you've already noted, Mark, a very knowledgeable crowd, as is always the case here at the U.S. Open. These guys in attendance watching, they do know their pool. Yeah, that really put a hurting on Shane Van Boning for this rack. He's going to have a hard time going one rail to hit it. Oh, look how this turned out. Great. Pays to hit him. He's rewarded with a great shot. Earl won't appreciate it that much, though. Yeah, but Earl's not really shaking his head, you know. I think he's pretty well prepared for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so far he's really been in this good mood. Of course, he come back and won today. If he could behave in that fashion when he lost, he'd be a millionaire. 
just because of the entertainment value. Well, Shane's got way the upper hand now. Not necessarily he can pot the, pocket the ball, but he's got control of the table and he's pretty close range. racks in this match that have been free flowing. This is another one of those that looks like it's coming down to a battle of safety play and Van Boning with a terrific bank. And this six looks like it'll go by the nine, so every chance to get that one rack in front again for Shane. I don't know. I guess it goes, but you would think it would be silly if he didn't have it, a shot that it would go. Oh, yeah. Good call, Jim. Yeah, good concentration. He focused, made sure he took advantage of that bank shot. And 4-3, the lead he enjoys by virtue of that good bank. Your new place, will you have snooker tables? Eight. Eight snooker Eight tables. Eight snooker tables. What We've brand? Got, uh, I bought them out of uh, Asia, Shender, which are, uh, they're, they're virtually the same table that you, uh, they're used in the IBSF World Championships, the, the World Games, the Asian Games. I see. So they're, uh, they're a quality table, a lot like the star table that are used in the, uh, the professional game today. Terrific looking table. And then I've got... Uh, what have I got? 12, 16, 28 of these. 28 diamonds. Well, that's a huge place. Good for you. It's not open yet, Mark. <laughs> it's not good for me yet. Oh. Nine. Wood the nine count. is Wood very close. It's in. So just like that, a two-rack lead materializes for the South Dakota kid. Five, three over Earl Strickland. There haven't been too many nines off the break. And as Mark already said, if it's made into the two bottom corner pockets, because the players rack their own, it's respotted. So not too often you see that. Yeah, you'll have to come up and pay me a visit. When, no, uh, I'd love to. Yeah, when yeah. we get open, I'm, uh, I'm really gearing it down to have a lot of tournaments. We've got a lot of businesses in the area, and we're taking so long to open, we've got a chance to build up some relationships with uh, a few of these businesses, Mark. So I want to try and uh, get a little bit of money involved in some of the tournament scene up there. Seven down, and the one sitting pretty. Well, this is looking ominous for Strickland now. I must say that that seemed to be the best break of the match because the cue ball wasn't bounding around like it was airborne when it hit the one. He hit him a little square, and you can see he got quite a bit of ball action. You're not, you're not always blessed with a good shot like this, but I thought he hit him better. Now the four and five, that's a little issue down there, but the three's close by, so maybe he can develop that or play position for it. Yeah, that would be the only stumbling block in this rack, and this is going to be the key shot right here from the two to the three. The angle that he leaves himself on the three will dictate how he attacks that four. Takes a moment here because he's pretty straight on. He's going to have to hit this pretty flush. No, he was able to manipulate the pocket. Just trickling up there. Wouldn't have minded having it go another six, eight inches. Just a little straight. Now he's going to have to use the inside of the pocket, if that's even available, to create the angle that he needs. These guys from these mid-range shots are pretty good at manipulating the pocket. Didn't have it. Oh, he did. That was as much as he could get. Yeah, you talked about having a little bit more angle. Had he left himself a little further down the table mark, he'd have been able to roll through and leave himself a straight four. This is tricky now, this one. These guys are so good, though. It's tough for me and you, but these guys make them just seem so effortless. Look how pure he hit that ball. 
How much fun must it be to play pool when that shot's not really that much of a challenge for you? Two cushion position. Nice speed there. Worked himself close. Fundamental out now. It's going to be three racks in a row for Van Boning. And it's going to put the Pearl under a bit of pressure. 6-3 the lead. Yeah, the nine on the break and then followed up with a break and run out. And that's a devastating turn of events. Yeah, and all by virtue of the, uh, the bank. Really, when Strickland had snooker Van Boning back in the seventh rack, snookered him, looked like he had control, certainly, of that rack, and he would have been breaking 4-3 ahead. Well, it's completely turned on him. Yeah. that's Well, these matches turn around like that, as we've got to witness, and that's what makes it exciting. That's why they play him. But Earl's got to stay positive. You know, he's got to wait for the chance, and that's as positive as I've seen him look. He's 6-3 down. Well, you know, one thing that helps in this match is that he really respects Shane because he knows Shane works hard like he does. And some of the other guys, it bothers him when they do this to him that don't seem to work as hard. You're 100% right, and I've actually interviewed Earl, and he has said that exact thing, Mark. I've spoken to him in, in Asia. He said that to me in the lobby of the hotel when I was interviewing him, just that he respected players that were more athletic and treated the treated pool mm -hmm. like a sport mm -hmm. and looked after themselves. Another good shot. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> good idea for sure. I don't know if it was a good shot after all. <laughs> what a nice shot. Remember what I was saying about elevated cue shots? He just trims that. Ooh, he might have a shot here, Jim. He deserves one. I think the way the balls have rolled to this point in the match, I think no one would begrudge Earl Strickland getting a little little chocolate coming his way. When you, yeah, when you make a good shot, I really don't begrudge somebody getting that because you have to be a great talent to even get yourself exposed to get fortunate. Harold's making a speech. He's got the audience laughing. <laughs> you know, by far the most fun player to watch is Earl Strickland. By far. Win or lose. Now, Shane, no, he's not entertained by any of this. He just wants to get up there and do his thing. He knows better than to get engaged with this. No, well, he didn't quite hit this one hard enough. Mm. Yep. He'll still be able to flick this one in, but now that cue ball is going to be running up table, so he wants to keep it in close proximity to the five. He hit that in the pocket so pure. <laughs> he got kind of a rough kiss there. Yeah. Aren't you glad? There's, there's no hurry here, you know. I mean, I would rather Earl think about this shot before he just steps up and hits it. This is right where he sometimes falters when he gets upset. No? Look at this. Oh, well, trickled out, but well played, you know. With the one ball with turn is the difference. This would be a big ball for Shane Van Boning to get. This is on the pro side. Pretty smooth transition from backswing to forward swing, however. Yeah, I think he played this, actually. Don't you, Jim? Yeah, he did, because yeah. he wouldn't have left the cue ball there for the six. Right. Oh, that was well played. <laughs> now that's a tough ball to hit, too. And yeah. that nine kind of takes the easy one cushion or two cushion escape out, so. Yeah, Earl's not getting many rolls, though. No. But we know that's how these matches go, yeah. and you can't help it. So 
getting frustrated and one stroking everything is not the answer. No, but Shane's playing pretty good, and, and when there have been a few mistakes from Strickland, Van Boning has punished him, and that's all you can do. You can only control what's happening while you're at the table, not while your opponent is, so there won't be any sympathy cards exchanged. No, one guy was telling me about on the pro golf tour how this one guy came into the clubhouse and he was bemoaning the fact that he took a snowman, an eight on the hole. And he kept saying and saying, and finally the guy said, look, nobody in here cares. And there's a couple guys <laughs> in here wish you got a 10. You know? <laughs> and that's kind of the way it is here. You get a couple bad rolls. Uh, Shane's not going to be feeling sorry for you. Well, the lead increases 7-3 to Van Boning. And you know, Mark, there's another saying that I've heard on a golf course before. I think the same applies to pool. Doesn't matter how you hit the shot, you're always making somebody happy. Yeah, yeah, you are the other person, right? <laughs> so you're looking forward to Blackpool? Oh, very much. And, uh, Excited. Late, late yeah. November, early December, bring a warm jacket. Yeah, I've never been there, but I saw pictures of the venue, and that's uh, super exciting. Yeah, it, it will be exciting. It's right on the coast, the Queen's Prom, right along the water. We uh, actually I, we qualified for the uh, the professional snooker tour when I was still playing. Uh, all of our qualifiers were playing in Blackpool, so I'll be able to show you around. I know all the good spots. Okay, my wife is coming with me. The rest of well, I meant to yeah. eat, Mark. You know, like oh. restaurants and you know shopping, well, things like that. A living day, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were trapped. You oh, were trapping no. me there. No, no, no. I, I know of your nefarious activities. I, no, no, and I, I'm, I I'm just don't like partake. you, Mark. I, uh, <laughs> a warm milk I know guy. The, okay. Yeah, it's me too. I'm a teetotaler. All right. No, we are looking forward to it in a major way. You'll have a great matter. time, I promise you. We're a little concerned about the, the crowd. but Oh, he hit the point. This could be trouble. He caught a little break. Okay. Got a little break there, Jim. Yes, he did. Now he's got to make use of it. Yeah, he's beating up his pace here. Think about Earl, though. Is you know, he's such a such a force? I mean, he can he can knock three, four racks in so fast, get himself back into into this match. And it'll be all in the time where one of the guys in the front row stepped out for a coffee. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've seen it for years. When, when Earl's talking like this, he, he's not even aware of what he's saying. He's not invested in that, but other people do get invested in it. He's just saying it, it might as well be gibberish. He's trying to run out here. And don't think he doesn't have his full attention on running out. He trains like this, and it's a, it, it can be a terrible distraction to your opponent. Some people feel like it's maybe like, you know, kind of psychological warfare. He absolutely doesn't mean any of it. He's not really a bad guy either, but a lot of people do provoke him, knowing that he's a little bit on the edge. Well, he'll admit it himself. Mm, in between, or oh, <laughs> to make a thin hit. Always when I put myself here, I always think, okay, please don't skid. And he didn't waste any time. Collected like that game. <laughs> Seven four. Now he's just in need of a couple good breaks. But I think you're right. I, I think you've got a pretty good handle on Earl. As much so as uh, as anybody does, Mark, that I've heard. Because I I think if you asked him after the game, does he know what he was saying? He probably really wouldn't remember a lot of it. It'd be he'd generalize and yeah. But I I think uh, that he is totally there. You see the accustats too, and there's not a lot in it really. Van Boning eight fifty five and Earl just a little over eight hundred. But I think his total attention is given to the balls on the table, even though he's chattering. Chatting away as he walks around. And I think that's one of the reasons that he draws the crowds. People just like to hear him talk. 
Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the fast-paced play and all the balls hopping. He plays pool like a guy with his hair on fire. I mean, there's no way to not love watching Earl Strickland. All kids are drawn to Earl Strickland. He just blows off energy doing this and then, you know, locks right in. And no friends at the table. See, this is the part that I don't care much about the rack because it takes away one of the better parts of his game and Shane's game for that matter, the break and run out. It really slows that down dramatically. They're even questioning where to break. Now, these are trained professionals, you know. They don't even know exactly where to break from, and, and I just think that changes the dynamic of the game too much. That's a nice shot. That's a very nice shot. Yeah, it's probably as good as he could have dropped on this, too. Just wants to leave himself a little angle on that three. and Just got to be a little careful here. This is far from straightforward. Almost seems like he got to get straight on the rail over there with the three, almost. And I don't know what else he can do. He's got that little angle going towards the side pocket. You just kill it there. Guess we're going to learn something here. No, he went forward, played it off the five. Oh, come on. A round of applause for that shot. That was by design. Instead of trying to be cute, like I was suggesting, he played a shot that you can really win with or hurt your opponent with. Yeah, he's having a look to see if he can spin this off three cushions and leave it on the left-hand side. I don't know if that will avail the four, though. Mark, he may have to play this with a bit of speed. If he gets out from here, by design, this should be worth two games in terms of the difficulty. Hello, side pocket. Oh, well, we're all on that like that part of it. <laughs> that will prompt at least one more speech. Now, I like the way that Shane's taking a moment to kind of collect himself. He knows he's been a little fortunate, but it's not good luck unless you capitalize. Oh, he brushed everything there, Jim like our uh, good friend and we want to throw a shout out to uh, Danny D. Liberto as Absolutely. well. Hope he's doing real well and uh, I tried calling him this afternoon from the uh, from the airport in New York on my way down here and uh, just to see how he was doing I saw from Diana Hoppy that he uh, he was out of the hospital so we really do uh, want to send our thoughts to Danny we hope he's doing well and that's a very good sign that he's not in the hospital anymore even though that's not a very good sign from Van Boning that's really about four rough shots in a row. That was the first one that he missed, but I'm just saying that now <laughs> uh, I hope for Earl's Q's sake that he has a shot here. But I was about to say that's what, what Danny always used to say, Mark. He says, yeah, he hasn't got lucky yet. Mm-hmm. How come you're Well, I think we may be seeing the uh, extension used here. His shot clock, no, he's going right into the shot. Boy, come on. Great shot. <laughs> Earl the Pearl. You want to make shots like that? You better hit balls all day, every day for a long time. Good solid contact. Well, it could have been worse for Van Boning. He's left Earl a chance here, but he's got to be careful where this cue ball goes. Even in knocking this five in, not going to be that easy getting the cue ball up for the six. No. He's got to be careful. Even the contact from the five to the seven may take that cue ball near the corner. Pro top spin and speed here. Not English. Oh, what a Good shot. shot. <laughs> now, again, that was a difficult shot made to look easy. Just so much talent.
when they line up like that, you just think that that's automatic. But you have to manufacture that. He never even gave it a second look, Mark. He no. just got down and knocked it in like it was over the pocket. Well, that's what happens when you play that much every day. That's the way they look to you, too, that you can make them look like Mark, that. Mark, they never looked like that to me. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, you haven't hit as many balls as Earl Strickland has. Well, I think you're right about that. 7-5. You know, it's always been an interesting match, but it gets more interesting here. You can see that Van Boning has made his share of mistakes. Earl is just ahead in the Accustats numbers now, and even though he trails by two racks, that kind of says a little story about the way this match has gone, the ebb and flow. But Strickland's not out of it. Even when he was 7-3 down, we saw him in his chair, he was still smiling. Living in the present, isn't the, don't they always say that's the secret of success? Well, you know, with Earl, that, that usually is his deal. If, if When he has that good attitude like that, he plays well. And when he gets in some of those uh, negative moods, he can still play well, but sometimes he gets himself into the death spiral. A couple bad shots, and he's right on the brink. You know, and then a couple more bad shots, and he's over the edge, and he can't recover it at that point. But he gets out there on the edge quite often. Rack number 13. Oh, boy. Yeah, nothing. This is exactly what he didn't need, but at least he didn't scratch, so... Van Boning has to play from where they lie. Yeah, but he's not getting the opportunity to string any racks together. Right, he's just not getting the offensive opportunities that Shane's had. The entire difference of the match is when Shane made the nine on the break and then he broke and ran out. Otherwise, they played even through here, and that's reflected in the score. Tricky little shot here for Van Boning again, using the rake. It always amazes me that pro players are not more adept with the rake than they are. Some of them absolutely disdain the thing. Well, kind of a good news, bad news story there. It was nice to keep the cue ball in the middle, just flicking the four, but now the four, unless it'll go into that side pocket off the eight, and Van Boning's going to have a little look at it and see even the billiard from the four to the eight, possibly. That four is the key ball in this rack. There you see the situation. Looks like they see what he's intending to play is the 4-8 billiard. Did he get a little full of this? Is it in double kiss the territory here for that? Looks like it might be. Yeah, I can tell by his body language he's concerned about that. Well, if he doesn't like that, Mark, he's got a pretty easy safety here. Just kill the cue ball dead. I think he is going to go for the billiard, though. And maybe it's not too bad. This camera angle certainly shows it much better. Nicely, nicely controlled on the four, too. That's Efren Reyes' specialty. <laughs> Controlling the secondary object ball. Before I met Efren Reyes, I thought I just had to leave it up to the pool gods if you got one. I didn't know that you could do that. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> He's changed a few people's perspectives on the game. In his name, a lot of those bio sheets that I read when I'm doing the commentary of uh, a lot of these high-profile events, his name is on people's favorite yeah. player list more than any others. He's a member of my Mount Rushmore, my personal He's Mount Rushmore per pool. That's yes. a good one. Yeah, he just barely beat out Luther Lasseter for that, too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Who thinks about pool like that? <laughs> I do. It was a close call. I had Luther on there originally. You know, I got to play in this U.S. Open back in the days of Luther Lasseter. What a cool thing that was. Wow. What a great story. 
Yeah, some really neat stories from that. If you ever go to my website, playgreatpool.com, read all about it. I love stories. You will love these. You will love these. Van Boning loves a few more nines. I'd like to see a couple more go in. Eight, five. Well, three more to be exact. Yeah, I, I sit here and Danny is weaving some of his tails, Mark, and I'm just like a little kid. I, I you know, stories like that, I, I can't get enough of them. I'm, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you've heard of him, but th this is always one of the most amazing ones is his, here we got some break stats popping up, and you can see Strickland 200 on his break stats. That means one out of five. That's not a real Strickland pool. Yeah, and that's, that is the difference in the match, 8-5, because from an Accustat's perspective, they're probably pretty close. So really, it's just a difference in the success rate from the break. And there you can see it is very close, their Accustat's average now. So the biggest differential has just been between the breaks. To finish my story here in between racks, Danny went to spring training as a baseball player. Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris and Danny. And they're <laughs> out at night. And he bets them that he can throw a golf ball across this canal. And the other two say that he can't. Nor can they. So Danny bets them and wins and then has to strong arm to get them to pay him. I mean, what a cool story. That <laughs> Mickey Mantle, Roger Maris, though. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, naturally Angelo Dundee spoke at his Hall of Fame induction. Yeah. What a phenomenal talent. He Bold. He was a terrific bowler, Danny, too. Right. Bowled a 300. So. Same, I think the same day that he, what did he run, 150 balls? He bowled 300 and Something ran 150 incredible. balls the same day. Something incredible. He's without a doubt one of my favorite people, Danny. Oh boy, poor Earl. This will be terribly upsetting now. You know, uh, when you say that, did you ever get to watch him compete as a player? No, I okay. well, no, I, I lie. Um, I remember sitting having a coffee with him in, at his place, and we were looking at some old videos. So okay. I saw him in video, and when I saw his poke stroke, you know what it, who it reminded me of? The great Agents. Joe Davis. <laughs> oh. The great oh. Joe Davis. Oh, okay. You know, one of the the all-time greats in snooker. Danny's action was just like Joe Davis's. Huh. That is interesting. I didn't know that. I will tell you something about Danny's skills in pool. He brought tenacity to it. He was far less talented in terms of pure stroke mechanics than almost every player. If there was 32 players, he might have had the weakest stroke mechanics and you would be hard pressed to ever get him to finish less than sixth, seventh, or eighth. He will fight you over every ball. Yeah, tenacity was what I would call him. Always admired that about him. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. No, you know him. He's a scrapper. Well, speaking of scrappers. This fellow was cleaning up the scraps on this rack as well. A couple of terrific shots while we were walking down memory lane with our buddy Danny and uh, Shane Van Boning is doing the business here. Yeah, this would be his second uh, break and run out for the match so far. Most inopportune time for Earl Strickland. You know, Mark, when I see players like Van Boning who are very much rhythm players, and you're around this a lot, and Strickland is exactly that too, you see them when they get into that gear, they really don't ever give these balls a second look. It's just one quick look and that, you know, even count the strokes. Everything will be consistent. It's when players, when they say they're in the zone, that's exactly what it is. They get in that zone and everything is on autopilot. And Van Boning is 9-5 clear of Strickland now. And Earl's got to get to the table to have a chance in this one. There you can see how the racks have gone. That string of four in the middle there, that was really what put Strickland under pressure. That one break, nine ball off the break in one of those racks.
Yeah, that's the cut break. Wing ball is not finding the pocket anymore. It used to go in pretty regularly earlier in the tournament. The one oh, ball is wow. not hitting the side. The chance has arrived. I think for Van Boning, the one thing on his resume that is conspicuous by its absence is his lack of success once he leaves America. Mm -hmm. As great a player as he is, and we all know that. I mean, Strickland has had massive success outside of the United States. And all the great players from Europe have been marginally successful in America. True, but I would also like to uh, add, to be fair, the talent level in Europe and Asia has increased exponentially since Earl had his run over there. And so this makes it far more difficult for and, Shane and, and far easier for them to come here and have success. And you attribute that to players like Earl going over there and just kind of elevating the bar somewhat, Mark? Yeah, yeah exposing them to what high-performance pool looks like, I, I do. Well, I'm not. I don't totally disagree with you, but uh, I would, you know, maybe punctuate that by saying that I think that the tours they have over there, there's very strong tours that uh, take mm -hmm. place in Europe and allows these players to compete regularly with all the top players. I think that has has really gone a long ways to strengthen their game. And in Asia, the tours in Asia as well. Right. It used to be the Philippines, but now Taiwan, China. Oh, well, big, look at mainland China. What they yeah, send over here. Big time, Mark. But I think you're right. I think these guys were the forerunners that have uh, have kind of opened their eyes. And if nothing else, gave them all something to try and raise, raise up to. Terrific run out and much needed from Strickland there. You know, the other component to that, and this is how it's changed, Jim. When you used to come to a tournament like this and you're a top player, if you don't know the guy's name, you're the favorite. Nowadays, you don't know the guy's name, you might be the underdog. Yeah, very good point. And I mean, uh, actually, Barry and Scott Smith at the top of this, uh, this match were talking about how strong the field was this year. I agree. I think even though it's, it's been reduced in numbers, it's gone up a notch or two in quality. Oh. The standards have never been higher. Every time I come to a pro tournament, I'm amazed that the standards have yet improved again because it, the previous tournament was the highest I've ever seen it. This is dense and thick. and guys, Well, guys are going to and out that are in good form that have won this tournament. Yeah, a lot of good players like Economopoulos and Kazakis from Greece, and we saw Albin Ocean and his buddy Mario He from Austria, all players that no one in America would know. But let me tell you, these guys are great players. Right, right. And guys like Klatt and stuff, I mean, they're just another great player. <laughs> they're nothing special in this field. And not uh, being dismissive of their talent, just saying that it's that rich in talent. Well, Earl finally found the break, made a ball. I'm telling you, I think Earl's in the mood to bank this one ball straight back. Why not? Look at the position it carries. The other choice you can do is you can go for a bank in the side pocket, too, just because it's primarily a safety if you don't hit the point. Might even be laying better, go one on the side. Hit it with the speed that it ends up on the end rail. I don't think he's really thinking that way. I mean, You know, Mark, I'm not too sure he isn't. He's just called a timeout, taking his extension. I think he wants to have a second thought of this. And that tells me that he wants to weigh up a few more options, maybe mm -hmm. even, like you're saying, like a shot to nothing. Mm. Hey, that's exactly what he was trying. And he knows he's playing it at a speed where it's going to find cover down here. Right. Yeah, you can win with that shot if it finds the pocket, and you can also leave Shane very difficult. I must say, though, I think he was playing a straightaway safety there. As opposed Didn't to come the, close enough to the side. Right, right, because he would have got it a little bit closer. She's going to try to back cut this. Slightly elevation. I don't know. This is tough, tough, tough. <laughs> yeah, he hit it really good. Really good. 
Earl will not be pleased about this outcome because he knows there was a little bit of good fortune with it. I think Earl's thinking he hit it a little thicker than he intended. I don't think he hit it that bad, really, because the one was always going into the safe area over there. Mm, Earl saying he brushed the nine on the way back. <laughs> Pretty good reply from Strickland, though, all things considered. Oh, yeah. Earl, Earl's perfectly capable of giving a speech and a sermon and uh, accusation and then hitting the best shot you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> He is a funny guy. I would have to say the most remarkable talent I've ever seen, Earl Strickland. Look at that shot. Oh boy. Great stuff. This is what I mean when I say that you guys play this game to an art form. Now look at this reply. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, boy. This is killer cool right here. Well, yeah, this is tough. He may, he may have to jump at this because I think that five takes the left-hand cushion away. And he's going back. Have a look at it from the other side. Maybe he can get through. Can he get through between these two? Mm, I don't think so. I think he's got to go over just above the five with side spin and super soft. Nope, he can get through. Yeah. Or he's determined that he's going to try to get through anyway. He couldn't get through. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all bad, though. <laughs> You know, he didn't even come close to getting through. He had a good bit of that first ball, so what exactly he was seeing there. He's not going to be seeing much daylight on his next shot either. No. But Earl's got to try and keep this ball in the middle of the table. Going to have to hit this a little, with a little bit of speed and get it off that cushion. They're always tougher to hit when they're in the middle of the table. And tougher to get them safe. Change the measuring up. Try to use a lot of spin if he can go that flat onto the rail just below the five and arc it open. And Shane knows this one ball is the key ball in this rack. Everything's in the open. Nine six. He doesn't want Strickland to catch any wind in his sails. Strickland with the upper hand in the ball distribution right now. That could be nullified with this shot. Well, Strickland will be forced to play another safety. Bank in the cross corner? No. Oh, okay. That's a pretty nice shot. A lot of confidence in your control, being able to play a shot like that when you're under a little bit of duress. Yeah. Well, these guys live in this zone, you know, so when they're a couple games behind late in the match against a great player, that's what they play every tournament like. So, uh, unfamiliar territory. Someone was telling me about the urgency of the U.S. Moscone Cup team having to get off to a good start to let Europe know that we're here to stay. And I started thinking about it. I thought, like, we're going to scare them? Are you crazy? <laughs> now, the reason we do need to win right away is because my own guys will get scared if we don't start well, you know. <laughs> I do believe that. <laughs> I don't think exactly, you know, ooh, you guys are down 3-2 to two to USA, Ralph Suquet. How, how you like it now? <laughs> I don't think exactly he's going to crawl into a hole and hide. Nowhere to go but up, Mark. 
as far as the Moscone Cup goes for well, Team USA, and that's just the way you've got to approach it. Nice hit there. Yeah, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about it because it just sounds like it's self-serving, and that's not the point. Let's see what happens. Well, that's a chance. He's got to just cheat the pocket a little bit here and spin the cue ball, get it up table for the two. Had to hit that that flush. It was difficult to get much more out of it than that. That would be unreasonable to try to do something extra. Look at the length of this bridge. Yeah. Nice. Not too bad. Kind of an interesting dilemma here. You'd like to bump that seven from the rail, but you also don't want to hit it heavy and have it get in the way. Probably soft speed. Nope. Didn't even bother with that. Now he's falling a little flat here. He's going to have to manufacture an angle here. He's going to have to hit this at a bit of speed. <laughs> Small pocket at high velocity here. You better play a lot of pool every day. Okay. Applause, folks. Tremendous shot. Oh, Tremendous brilliant. shot. Brilliant shot. Oh, it settles in the cushion. Boy, the balls just are not cooperating. He's hitting some good balls here and having to work so extra hard. That one actually caught the point. Did you see him stand up right away? Yeah. Just feathered the point going down. I think the pool gods even felt bad taking that from him, so they let it go on in. Knowing how many good balls he's hit here. Floats into position. Well, this match has got a heart rate again. 9-7, and the pearl <laughs> will be breaking in the next. Every time it looks like Shane Van Boning's going to run away and hide, something happens and brings Strickland back in. Yeah, Earl's that good. He doesn't need but a crack of light. And he can actually sometimes produce his own offense. You don't really have to help him or give him a shot. <laughs> and to stay unbeaten, you don't want to have to work your way through all those great players that make up the loser's bracket. So many of them, as we've already mentioned, Players like Suke and Alex Pagalion, now Albin Ocean is over there, and Niels Fyans there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of great players in the loser's bracket. You oh, don't yeah. want to have to go join them. It's no easier. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. as hard. You might as well stay in the winner's bracket and just take the, the shorter route. But I guess you would be prouder of yourself if you went through all those guys to get to the final, too. Mika Emden did it one year. He lost his second match and went right through the loser's bracket and ended up being the last man standing. It's as good a performance as we've ever seen here at the U.S. Open. I jokingly always say I did my best work in the loser's bracket, but because that's where I primarily <laughs> found myself. You know, so. <laughs> Yep. Earl sometimes rubs people the wrong way. He oftentimes makes a good point. I want to see baseball players mark their own score. <laughs> I don't know exactly what that has to do with it, but it is a distraction that you have to concentrate for that, too. Uh, he just hasn't had any fortune on the break. That's not Earl Strickland pool either, is it, Jim? No, not at all. And, I mean, yeah. he's... He's moved everything on the table, you can see, and, and nothing even threatened a pocket there. What's your opinion about the break rules? Do you like you, this? You know what? I, I don't know why they've decided to bring the nine ball up. I don't know exactly what the main uh, reason they was. They didn't want guys to run a bunch of racks for with the wing ball going in perpetually. To me, you know, I mean, that's, same, that's, same for both players. It's the and plus, it's the way it's always been. You know, I mean, why are we tinkering now? It's almost like they had to lengthen the golf courses to try and slow Tiger Woods down. Maybe the same philosophy the players are 
are playing at such a level, they're trying to mm-hmm. slow it down a little bit and right, bring right. a little bit more play. But Like you said, Mark, well, that's the way the game's always been. Well, I mean, not that I'm opposed to change, but there should be a purpose to the change. And, you know, does it increase the fans' response? I don't know. I'll tell you this. In baseball, what do they do? They bring the fences in to create more offense, not less offense. You and, know, then, so. and then they raise the mound to create a little bit more. more uh, lower the lower, mound. Lower the mound. Oh, I thought they raised the mound. Well, that gives the pitcher a bigger Correct. advantage. No, the, no. Yeah, they uh, did. They not raise the mound. No, they lowered it from fifteen to ten. Jeez, Mark, I thought they raised it, but I, I wouldn't bet. Okay. Oh, he fluked it. Oh, <laughs> how about that? Yeah, he deserves it. He deserved it. Yeah. But, yeah, they bring the fences in and lower the mound lower to not the, give okay, the pitcher well, the. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bow to you. <laughs> I, I honestly thought they had raised the mound, but. I wouldn't bet my life on it for sure. And I know you're a very astute baseball fan, mm. so you, you'd be the last guy that I'd be arguing with on anything baseball related. And I'm, I'm normally not that versatile in the, my knowledge base of any topic, but that's one. That's one. I'm very well, confident of I, Well, I know that. And if you've ever seen Mark's business card, you'd know too. <laughs> I love the St. Louis Cardinals. Huh? That's the way it is. But now Strickland, to get back to the matter of hand here, he's got that 6-7 down there. What kind of angle does he have here? He must like it. Yeah, I think the 6 will go. Okay. He's out Clearly. far enough where the 6 is. Uh, he's got plenty of space. And believe it or not, well. It didn't go. That, it and didn't he played go. Per, that was yeah. a pre-planned safety. Well, the way that he, he played it so quick, he obviously had that in mind. Mm-hmm. About three shots ago. And then he's got the upper hand in this rack now. This is an interesting deal because, you know, Shane's, you know, suffering this, but you really have to play a shot. You really have to play to make the six ball here. This is strangely similar to a few racks ago when it looked like Strickland was coming back too and he had Shane in trouble. Shane kick, got safe. And the exchange went his way. Let's see if the same holds true here. Oh, boy. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> now, that's just the competitive Earl Strickland there. I mean, he can't control what Van Boning does, and he'd be the first to tell you he's just sick, he doesn't have a shot. But like I said, this is exactly what happened when it looked like Strickland was coming back at him, you know, midway through this match. Mm hmm. He had a double kiss and stick the cue ball there. You can't play for that. It just happens, you know, but more of those things have gone Shane's way than Earl's way in this match. And things tend to get a little bit more magnified when it's near the end of the match. And at 9-7, we're definitely at the business end of this one. So shots are going to be remembered. And I guarantee you Strickland's not going to let Van Boning forget the fact that he thinks he got lucky. Terrific. This would be the game to put Shane on the hill. It would take something terribly unforeseen to happen for him to not get there. I'll tell you something, when you train like these guys do, when you lose, it stings because you put your whole heart into it. And there's just no way to accept a loss lightly. Well, they take it personally. I mean, losing is a bitter pill. And neither one of these guys, they're champions. They're champions for a reason. Losing's not an option. And 10-7, Van Boning's on the hill, and he'll be breaking for the last time. 
but still, Strickland just in front with the Accustats numbers. If not for a little roll here or there, this match could be 10-7 in Earl's favor. Oh, easily. Yeah. Yeah, it's that close of a call. To the average person, they think 10-7's a big lead or something. Not at this level. It's one or two differences in the shots. And Boeing ventures out to the extreme side of the box. Cut break. And nothing. Well, you hear the fans. They want to see a bit more pool. Trying to push her along a little bit. Yeah, he wasn't playing that. He was playing to get safe. Yeah, he was trying to duck behind the three and the four, and now he's going to have to kick at this off the side cushion and try and weld the cue ball behind the seven. Uh, well, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And Earl may well have played his last shot in this match. Kind of a hasty. Well, we can't. He plays fast anyway, but it does seem a bit amateurish scratching off that side of the ball. I mean, you got to hit it thick enough with draw that it would require a gross miss hit to scratch there, just so you know. Well, this will definitely make a big statement for Van Boning. Because everybody always pays attention to where Earl Strickland's name is in the draw sheet. He didn't do real well on this. He's going to have to leave the cue ball along the rail. This is not going to be that easy. Yeah, he's measuring it up. If he stops there, can he cut it back in the side? He might have to trickle the head about one ball width. There it is. Okay. Well, that was a good shot. Very smooth, great speed. He does know how to get to the finish line, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he knows he's, he, this match is nowhere near over if he lets this rack escape. He could easily not get another good turn. Doesn't mean the Earl would run all the racks, but he could be kicking you know, every time he comes to the table, and I have to hope it works out. Well, and Moaning capitalized. Well, he took his chances when they came. And a few breaks at the right times, and Strickland won't hesitate to let him know that either. 11-7 the final score. Shane Van Boning stays unbeaten in his quest for a third straight U.S. Open title.